Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're actually not talking about a discovery per se, we're actually talking about a kind of a clarification of a discovery from a couple of years ago, when the scientists thought they discovered the closest black hole to planet Earth, located in a system that's visible with the naked eye known as HR6819, the original study for which you can find in the description below. And back then, initial observations suggested that this was probably some kind of a triple system, with something in the middle right there being invisible and something pulling on the two other stars. That something, that invisible something, was assumed to be some kind of a black hole. And not just any black hole, and not just the closest black hole. It was assumed to be an extremely rare, very low mass black hole of approximately 4.2 solar masses which would also make this smallest confirmed black hole ever detected, placing it in a very interesting category where it's basically just a little bit more massive than a typical neutron star. And because this was approximately 1000 light years away from us, this made it an extremely interesting system. It was a system that everyone wanted to know more about. But more importantly, several teams wanted to actually confirm if what the scientists saw is indeed there. With all of this located in the constellation of Telescopium, located in the region that you see right here. But turns out, just like it is usually in science, the initial observation might have been incorrect. You needed to have confirmations and confirmations, and you needed to have more data to see if this is actually what's happening here. But the new data and new observations found something entirely different. It seems that there is something unusual here, but it's probably not a black hole it's most likely to be what's known as a vampire star. Okay, so first of all, this is what the scientists thought initially was happening here. They thought there were two relatively distant stars, with one of the stars sort of wobbling around an empty point. That empty point is, of course, that black hole that we were hoping would be there. And actually, the only reason it was even assumed to be a black hole was only because of the initial mass calculations, because of the initial observations. It looked like that second star was orbiting around something that's approximately 4.2 masses of the Sun, and it was also somewhat invisible. That sort of initially implied that it might have been a black hole. With that star itself being approximately 5 to 7 masses of the Sun, and orbiting that central point every 40 days. But all of this was based on some of the assumptions that proved to be slightly incorrect. And I guess it's kind of important to understand how the scientists usually go through these types of reasonings and how they often come to these conclusions. So initially, when the star was discovered back in the 80s, it was assumed to be what's known as the BE star, which is often a very bright, very powerful and somewhat massive star that also often spins really fast. But later on, the scientists realized that instead of being one fast spinning star, it was actually two stars in a 40-day orbit around one another. But that study from two years ago, using some of the modern observations, argued that, well, the actual motion of these two stars, the wobble of these two stars, was not adding up to what we expected to do. In other words, they explained this as potentially another mass present in the picture that was changing the way that these stars were orbiting, and the explanation here was for some kind of an invisible object of approximately four masses of the Sun with some of the follow-up studies suggesting that the mass could have been less, or maybe the mass was not actually necessary, maybe something else was happening in this case that did not require anything. And so because this was a pretty big discovery, and also because there was so much controversy or so much disagreement about what's actually happening here, the scientists wanted to do a lot more follow-ups and wanted to actually test some other ideas to see if we can actually finally answer the question of this unusual system. What's really happening here? And so this new study includes the new researchers, but also the original researchers from two years ago. And they've discovered that it was very likely not a black hole at all. Now, assuming that the observations from the original studies and also from the recent studies are correct, in order to create the data the scientists were getting, well, these three objects would have to have a relatively far separation between them. In other words, these two stars have to be relatively far from one another, and also the black hole and the other star have to be pretty distant as well. And so this means that if we were to zoom in here, we should be able to see two stars separated by a relatively large distance. But if there's no black hole and if there are no three objects and instead just two stars, 
these stars can be generally pretty close to each other, and so even if we zoom in, the distance between these two objects is still going to be very, very, very small. The black hole is just not going to fit in there. And so by using several instruments on top of the very large telescope, including the instrument known as MUSE, they were able to zoom in here and produce this image you see right here. And the thing is, if there was a black hole present here, there should have been a second star somewhere outside of this white circle. But in this case, these two objects are very, very close to each other. The black hole in this case would not really fit anywhere. Which only implies one thing, these two stars are very likely super close to each other and are also probably interacting with one another as well. And one of these stars is a very fast spinning BE star, with the star possibly also sharing some of its material with its partner, meaning that this is what's known as a vampire star system, with basically one star absorbing the matter from the other star. Although a more likely scenario, because of the other observations, is that the actual vampirism, the actual absorption, has already happened, so it probably just has all of the atmosphere from its partner orbiting around it, which is slowly falling into the star and is slowly being absorbed by the star as we speak. Which, despite not having a black hole, also makes the system extremely interesting and very unique. This particular event has never been witnessed before. With pretty much all of the other absorption or vampiric events in the past, either still happening in real time, or generally involving objects that have already been almost completely absorbed. But in this system, it looks like it might have just finished and the atmosphere is still in orbit of the star, meaning that it's an event that possibly was going on only a few hundreds or thousands of years ago and is still very very fresh in the making making the star an extremely important case for studying the evolution of binary systems and also trying to understand what happens to these systems afterwards and whether a supernova follows, whether we're going to be detecting any gravitational waves as these stars come closer and closer, or whether we're going to be finding something else unexpected and unusual. But more importantly, it finally explains why the scientists were observing these unusual wobbles and, I guess more importantly, finally solving yet another mystery somewhere out there in our galaxy. But, in terms of the closest black hole to us as of today, well, the other one, LB1, was also disqualified a few months ago. And so, at the moment, it looks like V723 Monocerotis is still the closest black hole that we've discovered to date. This is the black hole that we sometimes refer to as the unicorn. You can learn more about this in one of the videos right there or in the description below. On this note, Definitely exciting study, definitely great science at work, and something to talk more about in some of the future videos. Until we discover more, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.